In the name of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So thank you for being with us today at this celebration of Trinity Sunday um, here at St. John's on the Green in Waterbury. And uh, we ask that the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with all of you at all times. Um, our, our readings of today are, they, they do mention and imply uh, the relationship of God creator, um, especially in Genesis, the wind, the, the great wind that God uses to separate the waters from above and waters from below, that's there. Um, the word of God that, that God uses to create all things is there. And so, uh, and so the, just for starters on this, in this beautiful smorgasbord of readings um, is that well-known reading from Genesis. But I want to dig a little bit uh, more deeply into the Genesis reading uh, with you this morning, uh, just to, to, to explain to you that the Genesis reading is something called a counter-narrative. That, although a, that's a big word, counter-narrative. But So what would it mean? And to, to understand that story, we have to go a long way back into the time when the, the Judean people, the people from Judah and Jerusalem, were taken prisoner and made captives in, uh, in the empire of Babylon, so just, just south of the city. Uh, they weren't oppressed there, but they were, uh, the Babylonians intended to keep their eye on them so that they didn't do rebellious things. And uh, once a year, uh, for practically 50 years, uh, the citizens and those who lived about Babylon were forced to come to the city and here proclaimed the Babylonian creation account. Um, and uh, it starred the Babylonian god Marduk. And, uh, and their kids had to listen to it, how Marduk um, created the heavens and the earth and placed the sun and the moon and, and, uh, and the seas. And, and after a while, the Jewish minority, because indeed that's all the, the survivors of the, of the destruction of Jerusalem were a tiny minority of the kingdom of Babylon, <clears throat> they began to use the elements of that Babylonian account, it was called the Enuma Elish, they began to use the elements of the Babylonian creative creation account to explain to their kids what really happened, what really happened. And so um, it says that instead of the sun and the moon and the stars being gods or stations where the gods hung out, they were not gods. They were simply created by God. There was no God of the sea. The oceans were created by God. There was no God of fertility and the fields. The fields and the flowers and everything came forth by the hand of God. There was no pre-creation uh, pre battle of the gods that Marduk won. None of that even existed. Everything came forth from the hand of God. And finally, the creation of human in, humans in the Babylonian account, with all the gods situated at their stations high in the sky, they needed slaves. And so Marduk made some slaves from the mud of the earth, from very lowly materials, and they were the humans. And humans were slaves, and the primary role was to Worship the gods, offer them sacrifice so the gods could have something to eat. That was the vision of, of humans. And oh yes, the, em the emperor of the Babylon Babylonians was divine, so he, he was the intermediary. That was the construct. But in, in the, the Jewish reworking of this fable, God creates human in his image and his likeness. And he gives them dominion over all aspects of creation. He shares creation with these beings that he has made in his image and his likeness. He does not give humans dominion over one another. It does not lie with humans to dominate each other. Humans are created because they are uniquely fashioned by God in his image and his likeness, 
so as to be able to enter into a relationship with God. Now let me explain that. Love cannot exist except in relationship. God brings forth creation for humans to dwell in and to, and to have as their own so as to make love possible between God and humans, between humans and each other. Doesn't get more complicated than that. And uh, all the rest, the, you know, the tribes and the nation, those are human inventions, those are human creations. But in its original intent, God gives the earth to the humans and he gives humans to each other to care. Eventually this would wind up in the doctrine of love of God and love of neighbor. And so now I dare say that there's probably like one person in a thousand who would even recognize the term Enuma Elish, the creation myth of the dominant culture. One in a thousand, but probably 99% of people walking around, even if they don't believe in the Bible, would understand in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That it is the minority account that withstood the test of time, that brought to us the revelation of why we are here on the earth, to love God and to love each other. Christian, Christianity in our, in, in our founding, when Jesus sends those disciples forth, he sends them with the minority report. With, that they are a small fraction in Judea of all the Jewish people. Christians were very few. They had a minority report, a, more, a minority proclamation. When they entered into the Roman Empire, Christians were the minorities, persecuted, because the dominant culture does not like counter-narratives. They don't like them. Um, so let's get down to our own debt. How does the majority culture, the dominant culture, deal with, deal with counter-narratives? Let's examine this. Um, two in my lifetime. The first occurred with the, the um, what shall I say, with the genesis of the feminist movement. When, when I was growing up, women could be teachers, or they could be nurses, or, or they could stay home and take care of the kids. Those were, the dominant culture assigned those roles to women. Women were too emotional to have like, uh, powerful responsibility in corporations. You would never see it. It just, it just didn't happen. And, um, and, and so forth. And there was this whole narrative of the dominant culture that assigned spots to women. And, and so uh, I had five sisters, and all of them were smarter than I am. And um, so in their, in their growing up, they experienced these limitations. They experienced these limitations. And so now we have women in business. Now we have women in industry. Now we have women scientists. Now we have women um, in the medical professions. It's very, very common. Very common. Um, but the women have had to struggle with the, the narrative of the dominant culture and establish a counter-narrative, one that speaks to their capabilities, one that speaks of their, of their qualities. And even today, the dominant culture says that, human, that um, women are worth 70 cents for every dollar made by their male counterparts for similar work. That just happens to be the case. So don't think that the dominant culture gives up easily um, when it experiences a counter-narrative. Uh, the other, the other counter-narrative and dominant culture narrative that I experienced most recently was in the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I can remember that um, uh, a, a National Football League quarterback, um, be, in response to police violence against black males particularly, and the death of black males in police custody, he took a knee during the national anthem. Uh, and his counter-narrative was, Black Lives Matter, these uh, these young black men need to be safe in police custody. They don't need to be killed. And the, the dominant culture, the counter narrative was, this is lack of patriotism. This is disrespect to the American flag. We'll have none of this. And indeed, the young quarterback is driven out of the league and, and has been blackballed and hasn't been admitted since. And it was only when the counter narrative, Black Lives Matter, and the horrible image of a 
white police officer kneeling on the neck of a black man, George Floyd's neck, that it turns out this young quarterback had it exactly right. And I, I was, but, but the dominant culture has its own narrative, you know. They don't like counter narratives. They will talk not about peaceful protests and the millions of people out in the streets, they'll talk about rioters. You'll hear that. Um, we need, we need uh, you know, all kinds of controls to deal with the rioters. And indeed, you have to admit, some people got out of hand. But this takes nothing away from the fact that there is a counter narrative that we need to listen to because it's just as much positive energy and opportunity for our country to take a major step and grow from this. But just keep in mind, we started off, the Bible started off as a counter narrative, not as a dominant narrative. So we gotta hang on to what we truly believe in. Um, remembering in the words of the gospel, what Jesus tells us, I am with you, I am with you all days. Love God, take care of each other, amen.